I'm Tammy and welcome back to my channel. It is like 10 p.m. on Sunday. This week coming up is a night shift week so I thought I would do a weekly beauty vlog style video. Originally I was going to carry on with like the kind of series that I had started the last time I did a weekly vlog where I kind of did a themed TBR in order to get through a lot of books on my physical TBR and try and cut it down. However, <laughs> one, I have been in a reading slump like all month pretty much and I've only just got out of it this week. Kind of just want to mood read. Secondly, I have so many library books <laughs> checked out at the moment. I think I have 10 books checked out and nine of them are unread. So I think that might be what this is mood reading from all the library books that I have checked out currently and the first thing that I think I'm gonna pick up is Lanny by Max Porter. So Max Porter wrote Grief is the Thing with Feathers which I entirely credit for getting me back into reading. I read it in 2018 and I absolutely adored it. This is his second book which I have been meaning to read for the longest time and I just keep not buying it and not picking it up and I saw that they had it in the library. I'm probably gonna start reading it tonight. It is not long, it is just over 200 pages and it's quite sparsely written like some of it is more kind of poetry it says not far from london there is a village the village belongs to the people who live in it and to those who lived in it hundreds of years ago it belongs to england's mysterious past and its confounding present it belongs to mad pete the grizzled artist to ancient peggy gossiping at her gate to families dead for generations and to those who have only recently moved here but it also belongs to dead papa toothwort who has woken from his slumber in the woods, dead Papa Toothwort, who is listening to them all. It's just about the people in this village and their experience with the village. I don't really know, but I know I like Max Porter, so we'll see how it goes. Hi, it is now like half 12 on Monday. I ended up going to bed at like 3 a.m. last night, so I actually got a pretty decent amount of sleep, which is nice. I also ended up getting like half of Lanny read, so I read the entire first part and I'm enjoying it so, so much. This is exactly what I wanted from Max Porter, you know? His writing style is just so unique. I actually tabbed a bit because I wanted to read it. The smell of metal scares me, he says. And once I am a child again, smelling my palms, blood, iron, coins, nails, and pins, war men with bullets and rusty hinge grims, the smell of metal lingers on my lips and on my fingers. It just constantly kind of weaves in and out from like prose into poetry. And the story is so interesting. So it's about this village and there's this little boy called Lanny who is, everyone thinks he's like a little bit strange. He seems very precocious but also very away with the fairies in a strange way he's very whimsical he believes in magic and there's this local legend dead papa toothwort and he's like the local kind of boogeyman story and in this world he does genuinely exist and you do get passages told from his perspective and then you also get passages from pete who is this artist who is friends with Lanny's parents. He gives Annie, Lanny art lessons and Lanny like hangs out at his house. He looks after Lanny. They have like this really beautiful friendship. And then you hear from Lanny's mum and Lanny's dad and they're kind of differing opinions about Lanny. So Lanny's mum is like an out of work actress and she's a writer and she loves that Lanny is kind of a little bit strange and a little bit whimsical. She thinks he's all the more like beautiful for it. His dad finds it like really scary and really off-putting and we're building to something like maybe Dead Papa Toothwort's gonna do something bad to Lanny because he is infatuated with Lanny. He feels like Lanny is like the only kid in the village that truly still believes in him. The audiobook is on Scribd and last night I did actually for some of the passages, listen to the audiobook while I was reading the book as well, which was really cool, especially the dead papa toothwort sections listening to those is 
really great because you have Max Porter reading the narration and then you have all these actors like these voice actors reading the voices of like the people in the town so that was really fun and I thought that once I finish my breakfast I need to take Falco for his walk and I thought that I would maybe listen to some more of Lanny while I walk him I do actually have um another audiobook that I have on the go but I think I just want to stay in this book for right now you know just got back with the dog. I actually listened to the entirety of the second part of Lanny while I was out. We have like 30 pages left. Something has happened to Lanny. So you're kind of getting all of these broken up like thoughts of various different people from all around the village and what they think and their true feelings about the family and stuff. And it's just so good. He is just capturing this quintessentially English village so so well and all of the um good and bad things about that. If you have never read any Max Porter I just beg you to. I'm gonna read the final 30 pages of this book now and then I will check back in and we'll pick another one. Hello so I just finished Lanny by Max Porter easy five out of five i actually think i like this even more than grief is the thing with feathers just because it's a bit more of a accessible story this one is just about this village and this thing that happens in the village and it has this kind of fairy tale element woven in as well and it's just so wonderfully written max porter's writing is so lyrical and poetic but it's also like visceral i would not call it flowery like i don't think it's pretty or flowery it's visceral but yeah it was just 100 percent what i was looking for out of a max porter book it was perfect five out of five i loved it so so much so i think i said last night that this vlog is just gonna be me kind of mood reading but specifically from the absolutely insane amount of library books I have checked out currently one down eight to go so now we need to pick a new book I'm just really not in the mood to commit to something over 250 pages this week so I think I'm gonna pick from these three which are all under 250 pages so the first one that i have here is on earth we're briefly gorgeous by ocean young i have heard so many fantastic things about this book like i don't think i've heard anyone who's read it say anything bad about it so this says this is a letter from a son to a mother who cannot read written when the speaker little dog is in his 20s the letter unearths a family history that began before he was born it tells of vietnam of the lasting impact of war and of his family's struggle to forge a new future it serves as a doorway into parts of little dog's life his mother has never known episodes of bewilderment fear and passion all the while moving closer to an unforgettable revelation so that sounds stunning i've heard the writing is stunning i also think that this is semi-autobiographical the next one is adele by lola slamani i read lullaby by lola slamani and that's this really kind of slow burn but dark character study about this nanny who murders the two children that she looks after and it's all about like how she got to that point and why she did what she did and this is again a kind of darkish character study but it's about a woman who seems to have this perfect life she's a journalist she lives in this fancy apartment she's really successful she's got this wonderful husband but she's bored and she starts having affairs and one night stands and this develops into like a compulsion and it's about how that kind of almost consumes her entirely and it just sounds so fascinating and so just not what i've been reading recently so that sounds super super exciting to me right now so we might go for this one and then we have one more book that's under 250 pages from my 
library loans shelf read at the bone by jacqueline woodson which is about a young woman in brooklyn in 2001 so i think it's like a coming of age story but then also it's follows this family history and it's about race and class and parenthood and all of that really interesting stuff having now spoken about these three books i think i am definitely the most intrigued and in the mood for adele right now i don't think i'm gonna start reading this right this second but i will catch up as soon as i have actually started Hello, it has just gone 5 p.m. I'm now in my PJs because I'm a boring human. I'm about to make dinner. I thought that while I'm cooking, I might as well listen to an audiobook and also admit to you guys that in addition to the 10 physical library books I currently have on loan, I also have three audiobooks on loan on Borrowbox as well. So I'm going to be carrying on with one of those. I think I mentioned earlier that I am in the middle of an audiobook. And it is Memorial by Brian Washington. That's what the cover looks like. It is about a couple who are kind of at a weird place in their relationship. They've been in a relationship for a long time. They're kind of falling out of love. One of them finds out that their father is critically ill, so he flies out to Japan to go and visit his dying father but at the same time his mother is actually flying in to New York to visit him and his boyfriend so what you basically end up with is our main character the boyfriend and the mother Itsuko kind of trying to coexist in this apartment while all this stuff is happening in their brains and I think their relationship is going to kind of blossom and become more important but like certainly to start with they're very just cold and indifferent towards each other and they just don't really know how to approach this really bizarre situation but I'm not enjoying it as much as I thought I was going to like I really thought it was going to be like my kind of book I'm just not as into it as I thought I was going to be but I think maybe when Utsuko and Mike's boyfriend <laughs> actually start to have a bit more of a relationship I might start enjoying it a little bit more I feel like we're just not into the meat of the book yet you know but yeah so I'm gonna listen to that and make some dinner now hello a very 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 quick Tuesday update it is now like half past five on Tuesday evening I did not film anything today because we have had electricians around all day but because of what they were doing it meant that we had to have our electrics off like all day so there was nothing to do but read so i not only started lullaby but i finished it i read it from cover to cover in one sitting while the electricians were here it's very gripping it's very fast paced you have to know what happens it was very page turning um, I definitely don't think this is as strong as Lullaby. In Lullaby, you're so gripped and drawn in to what you know is inevitable. Whereas this is just watching a woman kind of destroy herself, really. So in this book, we follow Adele. She is living a very enviable life. She is a successful journalist. She lives in a fancy apartment in Paris with her surgeon husband and their wonderful son. But she is actually... Well, the synopsis says she's bored, but you definitely get the impression reading it that she's actually very deeply unhappy and unfulfilled by this life. And she is always looking for something more. She doesn't even really know what she feels like is, is missing. She's just trying to fill this like intangible hole in her life. And the way that she tries to fulfill that is through sexual encounters. She is a sex addict. She's not even really enjoying any of these encounters. It is purely a compulsion for her. And you're kind of just watching her like spiral. There is a point in the book where all the tension breaks, but I didn't find the ending very satisfying. I appreciate that it did not wander into very stereotypical cliche attempts to explain why she has a sex addiction. I worried for a second that it was gonna be very like, oh, she's got daddy issues, you know? But it doesn't, it doesn't do that. I appreciated that. I don't know, something was just lacking in it for me, but I think that is very easily explained by the fact that this, while it is the second book to be translated into English, 
by Leila Samani. It actually came out before Lullaby in France. This is one of her earlier books. So I think she just hadn't refined what she was doing yet. But in any case, I read it in like two hours. It was an enjoyable enough time. I think I've settled on three stars for this one. And then because, as I said, there was nothing to do but read, I have also managed to get 50 pages into On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Vuong. This book is, as promised, stunning. The writing in this book is so, so incredible. Like I said yesterday, this is a letter from a man in his like mid to late 20s to his mother who is unable to read and cannot speak English very well. They are from Vietnam. His grandmother and mother did live in Vietnam during the Vietnam War and they are both very much affected by living through the Vietnam War. His mother's education stopped when she was five so she has a very limited language she can't read and his his use of language is his like attempt to be the words that she can't say you know it's so beautiful the way he describes it is absolutely stunning as a girl you watched from a banana grove your schoolhouse collapsed after an american napalm raid at five you never stepped into a classroom again our mother tongue then is no mother at all but an orphan our vietnamese a time capsule a mark of where your education ended ashed Ma, to speak in our mother tongue is to speak only partially in Vietnamese, but entirely in war. Honestly, I've had to stop reading it several times just to like let the words wash over me. It's so, so beautiful. I'm not gonna force myself to kind of read any more than I feel like reading of this book because I really do feel like I wanna sit with this book every time I read it and really allow the writing just to sink in. But absolutely, absolutely adoring this so far. I already know that I want to get my own copy of this so that I can reread it and annotate it. And I'm only 50 pages in, so that is a good, a good place to be. As for Memorial, I did get some more listened to last night. We have now switched perspectives in it which I didn't realize the book did so up until this point we've been hearing from Ben who is stuck in Houston with his boyfriend Mike's mother at Zuko and they are trying to kind of coexist and he is also trying to figure out his feelings about his and Mike's relationship and kind of relaying his side of the story I guess but now we're flipping to Mike and we're hearing from Mike and I'm interested to hear Mike's kind of side of the story and like the way that he is going to tell their relationship so I will probably listen to some more of that while I cook dinner but for now I'm gonna go and take a nap because I finished work at 6 a.m and I had to be up at 8 to let the electricians in so I'm I'm running pretty low on energy right now and I will not make it through my night shift if I don't take a nap first. <laughs> and my neighbours are having work done on their garden outside so I don't know if this clip is gonna even be audible but I just had a bath. I slept for a really really long time today. Um, I was so so tired after staying up all day yesterday and then only having like a nap and then having to stay up all night for my shift. But I thought I would just do a quick check-in. So I have read a little bit more of On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Young. I'm absolutely adoring this book. I am taking it a bit slower, just on purpose really, because I just am loving the language in this so, so, so much. It being a library book and me therefore not being able to annotate and underline and tab it is actually 
killing me. I've been like taking pictures of the quotes that I like on my phone. Probably as soon as I finish this, I'm gonna buy my own copy, reread it, and annotate it just because it's so, so stunning and I just want to annotate it so badly. But still, absolutely loving it. It's kind of so much about the Vietnam War and the impact that it had on Vietnamese people and just the lasting impact of the Vietnam War on human beings. It's also about kind of his mother growing up mixed race in Vietnam and then coming to America later on in life. So in Vietnam, she was bullied for being too alike and they used to call her and her mother names for fraternizing with the enemy, which is awful. And then she comes to America, but in America, she's too foreign and she struggles so much with her lack of language both in Vietnamese and in English. So I read that beautiful passage yesterday about his mother's like lack of language. After that he says that night I promised myself I would never be wordless when you needed me to speak for you. So began my career as our family's official interpreter. From then on I would fill in our blanks, our silences, stutters, whenever I could. I code switched. I took off our language and wore my English like a mask so that others would see my face and therefore yours. I just cannot get over how beautiful this book is. I'm loving it so so much. Secondly, I finished Memorial last night and I actually ended up enjoying it a lot more than I was previously. So after we switched perspectives, I started enjoying it a lot more. I really did not like, for some reason, being in Ben's head in the first half of the book. I found him kind of annoying, but then being in Mike's head for almost the second half of the book and then flicking back into Ben's perspective which is much more enjoyable. I don't know why um, but I liked that you got kind of both sides of the story. I also liked that the book didn't go where you necessarily thought it was gonna go. I think it could have been like a very cliche love story about these two people like rediscovering their love for each other while they're apart but it didn't go down that like super cliche route and I really 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 enjoyed that. So obviously physically still reading this absolute beauty. Have finished the audiobook I was working through. I actually think I'm gonna carry on listening to a podcast I've been listening to while I make dinner. But I do also have on audio on loan from the library A Promised Land by Barack Obama. So I might continue listening to that because the most annoying thing happened. I actually started listening to this on loan on Borough Box in I want to say March but then I lost my library card and I got it replaced and because your Borough Box account is attached to your library card when I replaced my library card I lost all of those loans so I have just been waiting for that book to become available again so I can finish it just because it's an absolute beast and I'm not attempting in any way shape or form to physically make my way through with this. Um, so I might continue where I left off. From this, I was really enjoying this book. I do actually think that it is too long. That would be my only criticism. And this is also only volume one, I'm pretty sure. But so far it is really interesting. He is such a fascinating, inspiring human. Uh, it is really good to hear about his presidency from his own perspective and it gives you like a real insight to the way that the US government system works which I being from the UK didn't really know anything about so super interesting. I'm gonna go and make my dinner now, gonna listen to Overdue's podcast about Giovanni's room and probably not catch up again now until tomorrow but still. So it is now Thursday and today is going to be a little bit different and a little bit more interesting than this vlog has been so far because last night I was watching one of Emmy's vlogs where she goes on all the little free libraries in her area and it got me thinking so I went on the website and they have like a worldwide map and you can see if there are any little free libraries near you and I found five 
that are within a distance I'm willing to drive to. I don't know if I'm gonna get to every single one of the five that I found. They're all within like a 20 minute radius of my house, but as far as driving to all of them goes, I don't know how long that would take. But I just think it will be fun to go and look at some little free libraries. It could be that we don't find anything. It could be that we find some really good finds. Uh, but who knows? I guess that's the joy. So in case you didn't know, little free libraries are basically just little book exchanges that people set up. And the rule is generally take a book, leave a book. So you can go and you can take five books if you want, but you have to put five books in as well. I have lots of books I would like to get rid of. Um, I actually have a shelf down here that when I finish reading a book and it's not one that I wanna keep, for whatever reason, I put those books on this shelf. And then when this shelf starts to get full, I send a picture to my sister and ask if she wants any of them, like take them to the charity shop, whatever. There are nine books on the shelf at the moment. So let's go to some free little libraries shall we hello so i'm in the car ready to go to my first little free library and thought i would just mention that while i am driving around today i'm going to be listening to barack obama's memoir so hopefully we'll get quite a bit of that read today while we're out here's the first one. Oh my goodness so many books <gasps> oh they have this as not a drill I'm taking that one. Oh, this book is so good. I love this book. Quran, pretty cool. <gasps> Wait. <gasps> oh my God. This is on my list. I'm pretty sure this is on my list. Oh my god, I already have a copy of this that I got from a charity shop. But I might take this one just because this one's nice. Yeah. They have Pride and Prejudice. And there's my books that I've put in. So cool. On to the next one. Oh my god, the first one was so good. So many good books. Oh my god. If I don't find any other books today, I'll be happy. Just because the first one was so good. Hello. So, do you remember when I said, even if the others were rubbish, I'd be happy with how good the first one was? Spoke too soon, didn't I? Because that was actually the only one I managed to go to in the end. I tried to go to two others, and the second one I tried to go to was on a really weird, higgledy piggledy estate, and it was actually. I think, anyway, like where there were some like back alleys that went like behind and in between all the houses and there was nowhere for me to park to get out and go and find the free little library. And then the third one I tried to go to just wasn't there anymore. <laughs> so, oh well. I did get four books though and I got rid of some of mine as well. Just thought I'd do a little impromptu book haul. The first one I pulled out was This Is Not A Drill. I think it's a self-published book curated by Extinction Rebellion and it's just like a collection of essays. This one looks like it hasn't even been read so I'm pretty happy with this. The next one that I found was Leishman is in trouble and I couldn't really remember what this is about but the name rang a bell and I remembered that this book is on my want to read list. Finally free from his nightmare marriage, Toby Fleishman is ready for a life of online dating and weekend only parental duties but as he optimistically looks to a future that is wildly different to the one he imagined his life turns upside down as his ex-wife Rachel suddenly disappears. As Toby tries to discover what happened, his tidy narrative of a spurned husband is his sole consolation but if he ever wants to find Rachel and understand what really happened to his marriage he's going to have to consider that he might not have seen it all clearly in the first place. Exciting. The next one I found 
was this really lovely copy of the curious incident of the dog in the night time. I do already have a copy of this that I found in a charity shop but I saw this copy and I just like it more. <laughs> so the last one I found was right in the back and it is this copy of Pride and Prejudice. It is the Penguin Popular Classics. I'm slowly garnering a little collection of these <laughs> um, secondhand Penguin Popular Classics. My Jane Eyre copy. <gasps> There's a bookmark in this one! Fun! Ooh, this has been stolen from a school library. My copy of Jane Eyre is one of these and I also have a copy of Little Women which is one of these Penguin Popular Classics as well. I like the format of them, they're kind of a little bit smaller than mass market paperbacks. Quite, I don't know, I quite like that format for a classic. This is probably the classic that I'm least excited to read but I need a copy of it for the little project I'm doing where I'm trying to read the top 100 books of all time from my scratch off poster. So I'm glad that I found a copy of it. So all in all, a nice little haul. And it has actually maybe inspired me to try and set up my own free little library because there just really weren't that many around where I live. So yeah, four books that I'm really, really happy with and a potential DIY project to embark on. Um, if I do end up trying to make my own little free library, I will film the whole process, probably make a video out of it. I think that could be fun. I also, despite what turned out to be some aimless driving around, I did get quite a lot of A Promised Land by Barack Obama listened to, I think I listened to like just over two hours of it in total because I was listening to it on 2.5 times speed. So I am working my way through that. I'll probably listen to some more while I'm making dinner as well. I haven't read any more of An Earth Full of Greasy Gorgeous yet either because today I kind of got up and then straight away went on my little adventure but um I definitely do need to read some of that so I'm gonna go away now make some dinner do some listening do some reading also find somewhere for these to go <laughs> whoops more books and yeah I will catch up when I have something else to say Hello, it is Friday. I'm just having some breakfast. I actually have so much to do today. So we're away this weekend and we normally clean the house on the weekends. So I need to clean the house today. Don't worry, I'm not gonna put you through yet another time lapse of me cleaning my house because I do that like every vlog. And then after that, I actually need to go to Waterstones because I want to buy my mum a really nice copy of Pride and Prejudice. She's had an operation this week and she's like, stuck at home on bed rest and she got rid of all her physical books when she moved house recently and I know that she is missing some of her physical books and Pride and Prejudice is her favourite novel so I thought I would get her that as a gift because what's nicer and more comforting when you're not very well and stuck at home than rereading a beautiful edition of your favourite novel so I need to do that and then I also need to find the time somewhere in the day to film my June wrap up. It is now quarter past one and I need to find a way of managing to get all of this done before 6pm because my shift has been changed and instead of starting at 9pm and finishing at 6am I'm starting at 6pm and finishing at 3am now which I actually don't mind um it'll be nice to go to bed earlier especially as we are going to be kind of leaving quite early tomorrow it's going to be nice to get some extra sleep in but that does not leave me a lot of time to do all the things that I need to do so I'm gonna stop wasting time I'm gonna clean the house now and I will rejoin you at Waterstones thought I would just really quickly mention I've read a tiny bit more of On Earth Are Briefly Gorgeous. I'm really taking my time with it um, just because it's so beautiful. I don't want to rush it. And then yesterday I did get a significant chunk of A Promised Land listened to and I'm going to continue listening to that today while I clean the house. So hopefully I will get another big chunk of that read as well. <laughs> Hello! So I am back from town. I did film a tiny little bit. I ended up 
going for the so this is the penguin cloth bound edition and they also do a collection called the penguin english library editions which are essentially exactly the same but they are just paperback versions but they didn't have that one they only had this and the penguin black classics and i despise the penguin black classics i think they're disgusting so this one for my mom i actually got really lucky with this so these usually come with a sticker on the back just like the sales sticker that they scan and i've seen a lot of people say that when you take the sticker off the back it leaves a mark and sometimes rips off part of the design but this one doesn't have a sticker on it so that's great and it was the last one in store so you had to give me this one and also i had loads of money on my water notes card so i got this for four pounds which is fantastic so i'm gonna much to i'm sure lots of people's disgust i'm going to write a little message for my mum in here saying like i hope you get well soon i hope you like the book so that when i give it to her she's got like a little note in it from me it's just gone three o'clock so i have three hours so i am gonna get a move on and really quickly try and film my june wrap up hello i just finished filming my june wrap up i rambled on for like over an hour about all the books that i read in june so editing that is going to be interesting but it is like 20 to 5 i have work in just over an hour so i'm gonna make some dinner i'm gonna listen to some more of a promised land while i cook and maybe read some more on earth for briefly gorgeous as well but i will see you when i've done some reading hello it is now saturday morning i'm actually gonna sign off the vlog here i haven't done any more reading since the last time i spoke to you guys and if i don't stop the vlog here it's gonna be so so long so yeah i think i'm gonna finish it up here for this week thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch this i really hope you enjoyed it and i hope to see you in another video again soon